Hi everybody, today we'll be having a fun video, but it's definitely a sensitive topic. We're talking about power scaling. And today's victim is me. <laughs> because today we're talking about a protagonist loved by a huge chunk of the One Piece fans out there, Zoro. I know there's a lot of Zoro fans out there, and personally, Zoro is a close second to my favorite character, which is Luffy. I just think he's cool and his quirks are so funny. Who gets lost in circles? I mean, if you're in the grocery and there's aisle numbers anyway, how do you get lost? So yeah, even though he's one of my favorite characters, I'll try to be as unbiased as I can throughout this video. Now, let's get into it. A short disclaimer though, since we're doing the most debatable topic of all, which is power scaling, and on top of that, it's a main character loved by so many fans, I really don't know how to ease into the topic, and I believe that it's just best to be upfront. So we'll get right into the meat. So are you ready? Let me start off by saying Zoro is arguably the strongest straw hat right now. Let me explain why. I know that a lot of fans tend to believe that the captain of the crew should be the strongest person in the crew. And I understand that because it's definitely been the pattern throughout the course of the story. But I believe that the captain should be the strongest willed individual in the crew. He should have a clear sense of direction. Are you lost? Gets the respect of the crew members and is able to lead them. I mean, you know, get them all in the same direction. This is why I'm open to the possibility that Zoro is possibly stronger than both Luffy and Jinbei. Yes, his bounty is 320 million, but he hasn't done anything that was recognized by the world government or the marines after the Res Rosa. We all have seen how strong Zoro was, and in all of the battles he's been in so far, the current Wano arc and fighting against a marine admiral are the only times he's been injured. Every other time he fought, he finished the battle so easily and basically without any scratches. Like back in Fishman Island, he easily fought with Ho Hodi and gave Hodi an injury while fighting underwater. He also fought the self-proclaimed strongest swordsman in Fishman Island, the anglerfish Nurusama. He was bored to death and he was asking for a better opponent. And he got the octopus fishman in Hyozo, who was one of the officers in Hordi's crew. Zoro beat Hyozo so bad that Hyozo even had to beg Zoro to let him go. And after Zoro turns around, Hyozo tries to backstab Zoro. But Zoro basically stomps him to the ground. This arc gave me the impression that it's just too easy for Zoro. And yeah, I understand that Oda gave Hodi and Luffy an out. Oda did this by letting Hodi eat so many pills and gaining unimaginable strength. And then Luffy's out was by making him fight in water, where he's exponentially weaker. So this definitely makes it hard to gauge the strength of Zoro when compared to Jimbei, Sanji, the rest of the crew, and most especially, Luffy. After that, we get some action in Punk Hazard, where he was basically too cool and is the first time we've seen someone win a fight with fear and intimidation alone. I mean, Zoro can't use Conqueror's Hockey, so this is totally different from Luffy's abilities or how Shoko user's abilities. This happened when Zoro was holding off the Harpy, Monet, who was also a Logia Fruit user. He used his ultimate single sword technique in the Dai Shinkan. He didn't use Haki to hit Monet, but realizing how far apart they are in strength, Monet could hardly hold herself together 
and Tashigi easily finished off Monet. That scene was so epic and the dialogue was so cool and is easily one of the top 10 moments in One Piece for me, hands down. Anyway, back to the topic. Moving on to Dressrosa, where he faced off with a lot of opponents, notably Pika, one of the officers in Doflamingo's crew. Pika uses the stone devil fruit, which Zoro was shown to have a hard time figuring out. And But once he understood it, it was easy peasy. I'm not even sure if Zoro had to use his new and improved Ichidai Sanzen Dai Sekai. Man, that's a mouthful. <laughs> but he used it to cut the stone giant in half. And it was a legendary moment for Zoro. But it was all downhill for Pika. He got easily cornered and was totally butchered after a few more slashes. After the fight, Zoro checks his katana for any damage, which to me is a hint by Oda, telling us that Zoro is not yet at Mihawk level. He has a far ways to go. I know that there was a theory after the time skip that people were speculating that after Mihawk trained Zoro, Zoro then killed Mihawk, which was how Zoro got the scar on his eyes. But even though it took a long while for Mihawk to be shown in the manga, Oda leaves us a lot of hints that Zoro still has a long way to go to be on Mihawk's level. And finally, the main event for Zoro in Dressrosa really is having a one-on-one -on -one with Admiral Fujitora. Now, the only time I would say that Zoro had a hard time fighting an opponent post time skip is really against Fujitora. The gravity devil fruit was something Zoro struggled with, especially early on. He didn't know what hit him at the start. The damage that Zoro took was nothing too serious, even if Zoro was shown to cough up some blood because of the crushing power of the devil fruit. Now, Zoro was unable to land a hit on Fujitora, but he's definitely able to go against the likes of Admirals. I think that in a very long match, where no one can run away, I would have to say that if I'm being unbiased here, and no offense to the Zoro fans out there, but I think I would give the win a very narrow flip a coin flip a coin type win to Fujitora. As in it could have gone either way, but it was decided by experience or endurance. By experience by because obviously Fujitora seems older, much older than Zoro. And by endurance, I mean just like how Luffy gets outlasted by Katakuri at first. So this is why I'm giving the very narrow win to Fujitora. But after the Dressrosa arc or in the Dressrosa arc, in my mind, Zoro was definitely hands down the strongest straw hat. No questions asked. The only reasons that crossed my mind why Zoro didn't touch Dofi was it would give the fans an idea just how strong Zoro really was compared to Luffy. And the other reason was definitely because, just like how Luffy didn't interfere with Zoro's first encounter against Mihawk, Zoro left Dofi alone. There's a respect between Luffy and Zoro and they understand without even having to say one word. Moving on, we go straight to Wano, where Zoro has been cutting up fodder and some heavy hitters as well. Zoro fought with Kamazo, which was in fact killer of the kid pirates, and then the sword bandit, Gyukimaru. Zoro easily fended Gyukimaru off, even if he was attacking Zoro, from the openings that Kamazo was giving him. Now, Zoro took a nasty hit on the shoulder from Killer and had barely defeated him before losing consciousness. This to me was a testament to the focus and durability of Zoro. Zoro is just so skilled. He has strong Busa Shoku. He has iron will, massive endurance, and laser focus. Because of this and because of how the current arc is playing out, I feel like Oda has written it in such a way 
where Zoro's godlike status among all of the One Piece fans was brought down a, a little bit, just a little tiny bit, maybe to demigod-like status. <laughs> and I think it's understandable if Oda did this on purpose. I think this was done so that Luffy will be viewed as the strongest straw hat. I really do hope that we get to see Jembe Oyabun in action very soon because I really would love to gauge all of the straw hats more accurately. Woo! So this was a fun topic. I'll be making two more power scaling videos probably within the week. I'm a bit nervous as to how you guys will see it. But it was so awesome making this video. And that's all for today. Let me know what you guys think down at the comment section below. And if you like the video, leave a like. And if you love One Piece, please subscribe to the channel for more awesome reviews, theories, and soon, gameplay. And guys, guys, please stay safe, protect yourself, and boost your immune system. Peace!